in Palestine. But in a twist, let's talk about Hamas versus ISIS. Take a look. Yes, Hamas forces are indeed battling Islamic State splinter groups in Gaza, cracking down on what they deem radical jihadists. And it came to blows yesterday when a local extremist leader was shot in a clash with Hamas forces. Okay, I can give credit where credit is due if that is indeed the case here. But I welcome Israeli relations expert Philippe Azaline back to the show. Okay, Philippe, I'm confused. Hamas versus ISIS, is that kind of like the equivalent between the Bloods and the Crips? Get me on point with this. It's a good analogy. And, um... Let me, let me answer you by playing a little game very quickly. I'm going to read you something and you tell me who you think said this. All right. Allah, Allah is the target. The prophet is its model. The Quran is its constitution. Jihad is its path. And death for the sake of Allah is, its loftiest of, is the loftiest of its wishes. And one more. Fighters join other fighters in masses everywhere. In the Islamic world will come forward in response to the call of duty while loudly proclaiming hail to jihad. Who said that? Well, Philippe, I can tell you because you and I have spoken at length about this, it could come from either Hamas or ISIS because, in case the American people are unaware, they are both terrorist organizations. But, uh, Philippe, please explain for those that aren't familiar with our show and with our perspective on this. Right, so this is from Hamas's charter. So the difference between Hamas and ISIS is very much like the Bloods and the Crips, or Stalin and Hitler, unfortunately. It's not much of an exaggeration. Um, they have a difference as to how, but not the what, not the end goal. The end goal for both of them is an Islamic caliphate under Sharia law that they hope to bring about through violence. Hamas is more quote-unquote moderate in the sense that it'll use the trappings of modern Western government to get there. It'll establish governments that are not exactly Sharia law right away, whereas ISIS just wants to impose the end deal right away through violence. That's basically the difference. And they're having a... a Winter group where they actually endorsed by ISIS, I guess, is my question for you. It's a good question. I don't think they're like formally part of ISIS the way Boko Haram joined ISIS. There's clan-based politics in Gaza, these big families that vie for power. And there's been a lot of financial problems in Gaza since Egypt cut them off, and that's part of the dispute with the Palestinian Authority. So some of these families will swear allegiance or move towards Salafist ideology, and they've been fighting Hamas back and forth. But it's not, from what I can tell, in any way officially ISIS, as far as ISIS has official uh, channels. Is this group anything new in the region, or has this been around for quite some time now? Well, in the Sinai, you've had this problem with Salafists who are loosely affiliated with ISIS for a while. And it started in Gaza, I would say, in 2007, shortly after Hamas took over. But it's been rearing its head more and more. You know, um, Hamas came to kind of messy stalemate with Israel last summer. And so some people there are frustrated. There's the financial issue I spoke about. And some people are looking for different ways of fighting Israel, of getting power. And ISIS now seems to be the strong horse. It's the one that's getting the attention. It's winning in Syria. It's winning in Iraq. So it's getting supporters there. I wouldn't be surprised if it does formally become part of ISIS. But ISIS doesn't want to fight Israel just yet. Of course, they want to get bigger. They want to metastasize first, and then and they'll take on right. Israel and the United States after that. We'll get into that in a little bit, but I want to go back to this group here, this extremist group, because it seems to me that maybe Hamas just isn't extreme enough for them. They want a more strict interpretation of Islamic law. Am I wrong here, or, or what, are the, what is the end goal for them? We know that the ultimate end goal, but what is the goal of, with kind of fighting with Hamas or being at odds with Hamas right now? All right, so if you abstract away all the political things that are actually happening behind the scenes, just in terms of ideology, ISIS and groups like it, the Salafists, Salaf means the ancient, it's the uh, companions of the Prophet Muhammad. So they want to immediately institute a way of life that is like in the 7th century. That's what differentiates them from Hamas, essentially. Hamas will go through elections and then not have any other elections. It'll work with government. It'll work with other nations. It'll adopt nationalism. They want a caliphate of all Muslim nations now, Sunni. And that's why they're fighting in different countries against Shiites at the moment.
And let's talk about the clash that happened yesterday. This is why I wanted you to come on and explain this to the American people. Because when I just Googled Google News Hamas, what came up was a big victory statement is we should be patting Hamas on the back. Look it, they're going after ISIS. That's really all I saw. I looked through several articles until I found any articles that were critical of Hamas. Everyone seemed to be touting them, giving a pat on the back, giving them credit for what they're doing. Uh, should we be giving them any credit for this, for confronting ISIS or the Islamic State splinter groups in Gaza? Well well, they're certainly not doing it for us, and they're certainly not doing it for Israel. The truth is, like I said, this goes back a few years, and recently you've had disputes within the Salafist groups and within Hamas about how to move forward. What are we doing next? Some people are saying negotiate with Israel. Some people are saying war. They're in a crisis. Every time there's a crisis and a dispute within Gaza or Islamist movements, the way to deal with it is to attack Israel. So a couple of weeks ago, there was a rocket fired on the city in Israel, randomly. Today, right now, uh, it, there's reports of more rockets being fired. So that's where it comes from. And Hamas, by cracking down on ISIS, is just defending its power base. If ISIS were, or the, this group that claims to be ISIS were willing to affiliate with Hamas and follow its orders, you wouldn't have any kind of crackdown. But for a group to actually be ISIS, it has to swear allegiance to Baghdadi or whoever his successor is in Iraq. So I don't think that's going to happen soon. But it's mostly about internal power dynamics, if not entirely. It's not Hamas coming in to say, oh, you're too extremist for us. Well, that's exactly why I saw it as an equivalent on the United States as gang versus gang, bloods versus crips. Neither of them are good. Neither of them are less violent than the other. They just have different goals, and they fight each other for the power struggle, for which corner they're going to take. That's the way I see this whole thing. But we're talking about rocket fire now, right. too, because I had you on. It was actually about a year ago, uh, maybe a little less, that you were on my show, and we had the bloody events of last summer with Israel and Hamas and Palestine, and this whole mess exploded. So my question for you. Do we have a ceasefire in place? Are we just one rocket launch, one fire away from having another bloody summer? I hope not, but I think you might be right. Uh, it's becoming unlivable now. Um, and Hamas, like, nothing was really achieved vis-a-vis -vis Hamas, right? They didn't change their method. They started investing money into digging tunnels and saying they're going to fire more rockets. And now ISIS is firing rockets to kind of draw Israel into this. It's very hard to say what happened, but it could explode at any moment. And um, I, I fear we may have a repeat of, of last summer. Uh, I hope not, but it's really, really hard to tell because uh, Israel has to kind of maintain a deterrence and it fought a whole war that seems to achieve very little. And now if every time there's a power dispute, these groups fire rockets into Israel, you have a problem. I think if there's an advantage with ISIS, it's that the European Union will be less willing to come and pay their war tab. After Hamas fought this war, Countries were falling over each other to pay the war tab. So what's the incentive for Hamas to stop? The only silver lining here is that if ISIS is in the equation, maybe there will be a different perspective. I'm not holding my breath. I'm not either, but I do worry. We've got Israel. We've got people coming at Israel from all sides. Even the United States doesn't seem to have Israel's back. So if ISIS itself does metastasize into that region, what does that mean for Israel? And what will the United States do in response, if anything? very hard to tell with the United States. I mean, uh, President Obama is not really dealing with ISIS in any serious way in Iraq and Syria. And there's a moral obligation in Iraq because the change and, and the troops leaving was an American decision. If ISIS takes over Gaza, God forbid, not my style to say God forbid, but they don't seem to be affected by deterrence. They want to die. They want war. I think it might be not extremely likely because ISIS has a plan of starting with the Shiites, then weakening American allies, and then attacking Israel. That might be the, the, the thing that, that kind of gives me a bit of hope that this will happen later. But either way, we're not looking at a good situation because Hamas is going to have to prove now that it's also tough. How's it going to do that? Exactly. We're just going to have extremism versus extremism. But I wonder, in the Palestinian Authority, for those that aren't as savvy on Israeli relations as you are, Philippe, let's talk about the situation there now. Do we have a lot of tensions cropping up in the PA within itself with Hamas versus Fatah versus all these other factions in the region? And what are we going to see this summer? So... Very important, like you said, to inform people who don't know as much, and you always give me the chance to do this, and I'm very grateful. Gaza and the West Bank are separated, as you know. Gaza is under the rule of Hamas since a coup in 2007, and the West Bank is under the rule of Fatah. Fatah has done a very good job with immense American and Israeli support, crushing dissent. So there have been little movements for Hamas to try to seize power. That's actually what happened. Who's going to control Gaza? But with everything going around in the region, 
I think even the Palestinians in the West Bank might not be so hungry for more war. But this region is so crazy in terms of, of, of expectations having no weight that I can't really predict it's possible that something about prisoners, for example, last summer, or some money issue could trigger a chain of events that will lead to a problem. So far, Fatah has done a good job calming passions. That's good. I, I wish we'd have a more united front in the area. Maybe we'd make some headway in negotiations with Israel. We know that, as you've discussed with us before, Israel is always ready to come to the table. They don't get a lot of uh, bargaining power there because they don't have anyone coming to the table alongside of them. So it's really hard to negotiate with no one. But, Philippe, thank you so much for being here. We look forward to you thank getting you. us on point with these relations each and every week because uh, I think the American people really need that in their lives. Thank you so much. Thank you, and congratulations on your success. Thank you so much, Philippe.